All right, so let's have a look at how we can create a database project, like a .NET project, .NET, um, with the entity framework, where instead of having to write the models, we start from the database. So in a previous video, I have shown you a tool called the DB Schema, where I can create scheme, uh, database schemas extremely, um, extremely easily. I made uh, and uh, all of those changes are in uh, this database. Uh, it's a Postgres database where I have an author table book, author book, category book, and categories. And categories also a um, recurring table, meaning that I can go from a root category to um, down to children's categories. So what uh, can we do here? We can uh, instruct uh, SQL Server to work with this database and create the models for us. So uh, let's type here uh, .NET new, that's a console app that has some templates. What we want to do is a web app where you can do a console app, up to you. Uh, in this case, what I want to run, I want to create uh, a new web API. So I'm going to do .NET new and then I specify web API. Um, I uh, want to have a web app actually. And I want to see that the name is going to be db, uh, db to model. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, now we go inside uh, db to model and our project uh, has been created. So let's have a look at the project that has just got scaffolded. And we need to add a couple of dependencies. At the time of writing, .NET 8 is in uh, progress. It's, it's not yet officially released, I'm using .NET 7. We need to add two packages, Entity Framework Core SQL Server and Entity Framework Core uh, Design. Now, why do we need the design package? The design package is essentially um, is essentially a package where we can have a list of services and we, in particular, we are gonna use this service where we can, uh, we can create database models from a database. We can also do it in code, so we can you know, open up and import stuff from uh, our code, but in this case, in my example, we are actually gonna use uh, a command line tool. So, Let's have a look in here. We've added framework core design and SQL server. Then what we need to do, we need to make sure uh, that .NET has uh, .NET EF. Oh, my computer is already installed. Uh, if it's already installed, you wanna do an update. So it's gonna be .NET tool update uh, global and dot net ef well okay i should have written dot net ef nice one dot net so dot net tool update global dot net ef so we update it and this is already the latest version. And now we are gonna do, um, we are gonna import the model. So I had just realized that I made a mistake and the server I'm actually using for uh, uh, my SQL is actually Postgres, it's not SQL Server. So I need to actually install this package, mpgsql in the framework called PostgreSQL. So I'm gonna add it uh, to my project and I'm gonna just remove this project reference. And then the next thing I wanna do um, is to get the data 
from the database to generate the model. So the command I'm gonna use is this one. I just copy paste it because I don't wanna make a mistake again. So I have a .NET EF DB context scaffold, and this is the, uh, the string format uh, for PostgreSQL. So I have the host, the local host database, it's called DemoDB, username, password, and then we're gonna add uh, what we wanna use, MPG SQL entity framework core DOS PostgreSQL, output there is gonna be DB, so we're gonna have a new folder with the models just created. So uh, what's gonna happen is, well, we get a warning because I basically specified uh, this rather than putting things inside a uh, connection string properly that is saved, not versioned, but that's just a demo. So as you can see, the book has been created where book ID uh, is, the, um, is the class uh, that we specified, the title and an optional ISBN. Then we have an author, the author has author ID, name and surname, book, author, specifies a book ID, an author ID, and as a virtual author and a virtual book. Be uh, then same thing for book category and uh, book uh, for the category in the book. And, uh, and then for the category, we created uh, an invert, uh, parent navigation where category ID and the parent are related. So as you can see, it picked up from this one and says inverse parent navigation here. So you can actually have a, a category self references itself as a, a virtual collection of categories. Has also created the, uh, the database demo context. Now it's gonna give this squiggling because um, um, it can be a non null, but if we basically remove uh, the ability to be nullable, then we also get rid of uh, that squiggling. And um, yeah, we get the same, uh, the same uh, warning as before, because I'm not actually using, uh, I should be using like to get a connection string from my app settings file. And uh, here you can see that on model creating, uh, make sure that the primary key is author, uh, let's scroll to the category uh, table. As you can see, the category table, category ID, um, the parent has navigation with many inverse parent navigation. So the plugin key uh, category, category. So that basically even the most complicated part of the, the simple demo has been demonstrated. Well, I... Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more of this stuff, please subscribe. And uh, if you like the video, well, leave a thumbs up or leave a comment. Thank you. Bye bye.